And welcome back to part two. Starting where we left off, we're gonna be installing these lock rings for the pins. Now these things can be a little bit of a pain in the butt to try to get in, but once you've done them a few times, it becomes really easy. First thing you wanna do is start with one side, obviously, and get it in the groove, and then use a small pocket screwdriver just like this one. And right about the center of the ring is where you wanna pry and try to you know, get underneath that lip and just kind of push it over for it to pop in. You can see there's a few scratches on the piston and you're not gonna really avoid that. Trust me, there's no way around it. I try to be as careful as I can and it just isn't gonna happen. Those uh, scratches on the pistons aren't gonna make the slightest difference at all, so really don't worry about it. Now we can grab some assembly lube and put it on the pin and just get it nice and moist. Okay, moist is probably not the best word to use for this, but you get what I'm trying to say. So we're also gonna put a little bit of assembly lube inside of the bore of where the pin is gonna go. Uh, really, you almost cannot have enough lube when it comes down to this job. Now I shouldn't have to say this, but I'm gonna say it anyway. Make sure you only put one of the lock rings on because if you put both of them on and you haven't put the connecting rod and the pin in, uh, you're gonna be taking one of those lock rings back out again. And the only thing that sucks more than putting in those lock rings is having to take them out. Here I'm checking a piston to see which side has the intake valves on it. And the reason for that is if you look at the connecting rod, on the inside, only one side has the grooves for the tangs of the bearings. The other side's completely flat. So what I wanna do is keep everything consistent, meaning on all pistons, I wanna have those tangs on the connecting rod facing towards the intake valves. The next step is pretty easy. All you have to do is line up your connecting rod and push the pin in. You should not have to force it or anything. It should slide in pretty smooth. And next we could go ahead and put the lock ring on. Now you can check the assembly, it should move very freely. As you can see, it moves under its own weight. Here I am just pointing out what I mentioned earlier, the tangs on the connecting rod are lining up with the intake valve side of the piston. Here I am taking the fasteners off of the connecting rod, but don't let this video fool you. These things were on here so tight, I could not take them off by hand. I had to go get my impact gun just to get them off. Now here I have a piston ring compressor that I'm sure everyone is familiar with, but I have one that's more specific to my application or my pistons I should say, so I'm not even going to bother opening the first one. The nice thing about this tool is that it allows you to install your pistons quickly and consistently. The downside is it's a one size deal, whereas the first one that I showed you is more of a universal type. And once again I'm going to do what I do best, making it moist. I, I should just really stop saying the word moist. <laughs> But really, we're gonna apply a little bit of a fresh engine oil into the bores, and the same thing for the tool to install the pistons. We're gonna just put a light coat of engine oil on it. Now it's time to clock the rings on the pistons. Here's a little diagram on how they have to be clocked. So you could go ahead and pause the video right there if you wanna review that. I'm not going to be showing it in this video because it's such a meticulous procedure that really and really it's almost impossible to record if you've done this before you know exactly what i'm talking about now it's time to install the bearings and as you can see it's almost impossible to mess up you just line up the two areas where the tang goes and again no assembly lube between the connecting rod and the bearing you want to put that on completely dry now i will admit that right here i had a bit of a brain fart i'm trying to install the piston but right in front of my face one of the rings is sticking out and it's actually hitting the tool preventing the piston from going down. So, you know, I'm here trying to get it to go in, I'm pushing it and it won't go and I didn't, it just took me longer than it should have to notice that the ring was sticking out. The good news is I wasn't using any tools or anything like that. I'm not here bashing on the top of the piston head or anything like that. I'm just using my hands so no harm at all was done to the piston rings. At this point, you want to make sure you're not installing the piston backwards, meaning the reliefs for the intake and the exhaust valves are facing the correct direction. So in my case, the intake valves are going to be on the right side. As you can see, for the first piston, I decided to use the method of just trying to push it in with my hands. And honestly, it put up way more of a fight than I wanted to. 
So for the other three pistons, I use the method that everyone else uses, which is basically using a handle of a hammer, whether it's rubberized or made out of wood. Just go ahead and tap on the top of the piston. Now you don't want to go crazy with it. You know, you don't want to break any of the piston rings, but just keep giving it light taps and it goes in so much easier. So I would recommend using that method instead of trying to push it in with your hands. And once again, I'm cleaning the crank using coffee filters and brake parts cleaner. Just want to get any dust that may have landed on there and get that out the way. Now you want to line up the connecting rod as it's coming towards the crank. You don't want it to hit and possibly scratch your crank. So that's why I had the pen right there. I'm just pushing the pen into where the bolt goes on the connecting rod just so I could guide it up as it falls into place. Now that this is settled, we can move on to installing the bearing on the cap of the connecting rod. Like I said last time, it's going to go on 100% dry, so make sure there is no lube underneath this bearing. And all you have to do is line up the two tangs and it's all set. Now in the last video, how we use plastic gauge to measure the clearances of the crank, we're going to go ahead and use that same exact procedure here, but it's to measure the clearances on the connecting rods. Now before we go any further, we have to be able to identify which bolt came with our connecting rods so we can get the correct torque specs. So here's a chart that was supplied with the connecting rods and we are going to go through each and every one of these to try to figure out which ones we have. Now so as far as the material of the bolt, it's right here stamped on the head so that's a pretty easy one. And for the UHL, all you have to do is take the overall length of the bolt and then subtract the length of the head. So we got 1.998 we're going to subtract the 0.394 which leaves us with 1.6 which is close enough to the 1.6 up there listed and the bolt diameter we're going to go ahead and measure where the threads are 3 8 is equal to 0.375 and we got 0.372 which is close enough so that leaves us with the torque specs for our fasteners are 45 to 50 pound feet now while tightening these fasteners if you went directly to 50 pound feet that's like passing go and going directly to jail you don't want that you want to do this in increments so we're going to start off at 20 pound feet move up to 30 pound feet and ultimately finish at 50 pound feet now i should not have to mention this but i'm going to say it anyway you want to make sure your crank does not rotate while you're doing this because don't forget you still have the plastic gauge in there and you don't want to disturb it. So now I can go ahead and remove the fasteners. Here I am removing the cap off of the connecting rod and I made it look easy but it's actually quite difficult to get it off because it tends to get stuck on there. But there is an easy method for removing it and I'll show you that at the end of the video. Here's the clearances for the connecting rods that I got out of the manual that I have and as you can see I'm kind of dead smack in the center here so as far as clearances on this engine everything has been great and i'm really satisfied with the way this engine is turning out overall to me it's looking real good and i like to picture the engine in the tuxedo t-shirt because it says i want to be formal but i'm here to party and now that we have our measurements we could go ahead and remove the plastic gauge and i'm just using again my coffee filters and brake parts cleaner to clean everything here i'm just pushing the piston into the bore so that the connecting rod can kind of fall off to the side and now that everything's cleaned up, I can apply some assembly loop to the crank and even some to the bearing that's still attached to the connecting rod. Once again, I'm going to be using this pen in order to get the connecting rod into place. And it's just, again, like I did last time when we were getting our measurements, it's just to guide the connecting rod up so it doesn't hit the crank and scratch anything. Once we get that in place, we're going to be putting the cap back on it. And keep in mind, the cap can only go on one way because the two tangs on the bearings have to match up.
And once again, we're gonna go ahead and follow the same torque sequence as we did the first time. Okay, so as far as removing the cap off of the connection rods, all you have to do is remove both of the bolts and pull it out just far enough until the threads are catching and then get a soft hammer and just kind of tap sideways on it and you can see how it creates a gap between the, the cap and the connecting rod and then you can just grab both ends with the bolts kind of applying inward pressure and just kind of wiggle it loose. Okay, so here's the aftermath of me rotating the engine by hand just a few times. As you can see, there's a scratch here. It's not deep enough for me to catch with my fingernail, but I could see it and it's bothering me enough to the point where I pulled out all four pistons because it was happening in all four cylinders. And guess what? It turned out to be the compression ring on all four cylinders. Now, how do I know it was this ring? Well, because when you clock your rings, the first and second ring have their gaps opposite of each other. And the side of the wall that was getting the scratch on is the side that the compression ring had its gap on so what's happening here are these corners are so sharp that they're cutting into the walls so all i have here is my file and i want to create just a very very slight bevel just to get rid of this sharp edge it's even on the edge that i didn't even touch the one i didn't even grind so on both sides i'm just knocking that edge off Remember, you're not trying to change the gap of the ring or anything like that. I'm just trying to get rid of this get this uh, this very sharp edge. And once I was done doing that to all four cylinders, I put everything back together. And you're probably wondering, well, how do I know I fixed my problem? Well, here's what I did. When I put everything back together, I switched them around. So now I put the compression ring facing the other direction and the second ring facing to the right. And what this does is when I assemble everything again, if I still had a problem with that compression ring scratching the bores, now I would have more scratches on the opposite side. So here is everything put back together. And I've already rotated by hand quite a few times by now before I started recording. And as you can see, no more scratches. That little piece you see in the center right there, that's just oil being dragged down. The point of all of this is if you see something wrong, Take care of it right now before it gets a lot worse. And that's it for this one. If you want to stay up to date on this project, just make sure you hit that subscribe button. I think the next video is going to be on installing the four piston oil pump. So that should be fun opening that bad boy up. So don't forget to follow me on Instagram. It's where I post all my updates. Consider subscribing. And like always, thanks for watching.